Hey what's up you guys, Shani here, welcome back to my channel and today I will be talking about 10 creepy American urban legends. So number one on this list is the grave of Lillian Gray. So this urban legend has captured the imagination of the people of the Salt Lake City era for years. Not because the tale is horrifying, but because the mystery seems that seems that much scarier. In a nondescript cemetery in Salt Lake City, Utah, a gravestone marks the burial spot of Lily E. Gray, who died in 1958. Nothing seems out of the ordinary until you read the last line, Victim of the Beast 666. No one has any substantial reasons for why her gravestone is marked that way. According to hospital records, she died of natural causes. Number two is the donkey lady. So this creepy tale comes out of San Antonio, Texas. The legend of the donkey lady goes that a local woman who suffered from severe burns that left her her face horribly disfigured and her finger and her fingers fused together to create the look of stumps for hands. Supposedly she a stress a stress ostracized herself as a result of her appearance and grew hostile to anyone who approached her. It said she haunts the nearby woods, in particular the bridge over Elm Creek, and is often the cause of motorcycle accidents in the area when unsuspecting cyclists notice her horrifying appearance in their rear view mirror. In the rear view mirror. Number three is Susskind Road. I'm sorry if I said that bad. Pennsylvania is home to some of the country's most prevalent urban legends. Sorry, I had to sneeze. <laughs> From Centralia to the Hel Helham country gates. This story comes from Pittston and its nickname Black Bridge that formerly functioned as a railroad bridge. The story goes, if you park under the, bri under the bridge, a ghoulish woman in white will appear in your rear, fruit, in your rear view and let out an ear-shattering scream, giving her the name Suskin Screamer. Supposedly, the ghost is that of a woman who hung herself long ago after being rejected by her lover. Number four is the Clown Statue. This urban legend combines some of the scariest story we all grew up with, the creepy clown and the babysitter and the man upstairs. The story goes that a young babysitter is fulfilling her duties at a local home when she calls the parents and asks if she can switch the room she's staying in for the night because the life-size clown statue is giving her the creeps. The father tells her to take the kids and get out of the house immediately before explaining that they don't own a clown statue. In some variations of the story, after the police arrive and apprehend the clown in question, they learn it's, he's a homeless man who sneaks into houses and pretends to be a statue to avoid getting caught, surviving off the family's food and shelter. In other, far darker versions of the legend, when police arrive, they find the babysitter and the children butchered, the latest victim of an escaped mental patient roaming the area. That one gave me a bit of the chills. I'm terrified of clowns. So number five is the Stow Lake Ghost. The San Francisco legend is 100 years old and has been tempting Californians to test their courage at Stowe Lake for generations. The legend at Stowe Lake goes that a woman and her child are walking near the lake, and during a moment of distraction, the child disappears. The mother searched frantically all day for the child until nightfall when she finally returned to the lake and was never seen again. Now it's said that her apparition can be seen by those who travel to the lake at night, where the woman will ask if you have seen her child. There is another tradition where if one chants, white lady, white lady, I have your baby, then she will appear, but then she finds out you're lying, she'll put you in the lake and drown you. Now I'm scared since I said it, that like, she'll appear or something. <sighs> Creepy legends. Okay, number six. The Patterson Road. 
The, this infamous stretch of road in Texas runs between Highway 6 and Eldred, Eldridge. Like many haunted roads, a bridge is involved. This story comes from the time of the Civil War, and according to believers, if you go to the Langham Creek Bridge located on the road and park with the car lights off, you will hear strange sounds and see the misty apparition of Civil War so soldiers marching toward. Number seven, seven, is the portal to hell and Bobby Mackey's music world. So, the music hall in Kentucky is so haunted that a sign hanging above the entrance acts as a waiver. Acts a waiver, sorry. Warning pa patrons that the establishment is not responsible for any harm that may come to them from ghostly activities. But a terrifying urban legend since sits at the heart of this ghostly music hall. Before it was a music hall, the building served as a slaughterhouse in the mid-19th century. Sitting in the hall today is a remnants of the, this literal bloody history in the form of a sealed up well in the basement. It's even claimed to, to be still stained with blood. The legend goes on to say that the well was a gathering place for Satanists, Satanists who used it, used it in the ritual execution of a pregnant woman who was beheaded and her head placed in the well as a sacrifice to the dark entities the occultists worshipped. There is some truth to the legend here. In, 19, in 1896, 22-year-old Pearl Bryan's body was found decapitated on the property. Pregnant at the time of her death, her boyfriend Scott Jackson and his friend Alonzo Walling had attempted to conduct an abortion on their own. After Pearl died, they removed her head with the hopes of throwing the police off the scent, but both men were caught and later executed for their crimes for their crime, not crimes. <laughs> Today, visitors to the music club say they the sealed well is a portal to hell. Some even claim to hear the sound of deep growling coming from the depths of the well. Number eight, Charmin. Charmin, Charmin, Charmin. In a stunning valley of o Ojai, sorry if I said that wrong, California, a creepy urban legend is waiting. The area is one of the most wildfire-prone wildfire parts of California, and in 1948, a substantial one burned through the valley. The story goes that a man living alone in a cabin just outside of town was a victim of the fire and burned to death while his son survived with horrifying burns. Some, some people say as a result of his disfigurement and constant pain, he went mad and murdered a local man, flaying him alive. The police tracked him deep into the woods by following the sounds of inhuman wheezing, but the charman escaped and fled into the wilderness, where it said he still lurks to this day preying on unsuspecting hikers. Number 9. The Green Man. Out in Beaver County, Pennsylvania, there is an urban legend with more truth to it than most. Raymond Robinson was a victim of a childhood, childhood electrical accident that left him so horribly disfigured he never went out in daylight out of fear that he might cause a panic among, among the community. He took to taking walks at night and became a figure of legend for locals who would drive around at night looking for the green man walking around at night. Though the myths built, built up m a much scarier version of him, he was actually a real person and a member of the community, if a little bit secretive. And number 10 is the Goat Man. Possibly one of the strangest and most well-known urban legends out there is a goat man who is said to roam the back roads of Beltsville, Maryland. According to legend, the 8 foot tall creature is said to be half animal, half man, and wields an axe. It was first spotted in 1957 by a couple who spotted the beast in their driveway. Then sometime in, in the 1960s, the goat man appeared again when it attacked a young couple who were parked off Fletchertown Road. Fletchertown, yeah. The story goes that after hearing a strange noise from the outside 
of the car, the boyfriend headed out into the woods to investigate. He never returned. The next day, police found his severed, his severed head hanging in a tree above where the car was parked, but his body was never found. In the 1970s, the goat man came to public awareness again after it was claimed a creature has attacked a dog. Its head was found not far from its home, but in similar fashion to the previous attack. Its body was never found. There is range of what the creature could be, but the most popular seems to be that it was a former scientist from Beltsville who took an experiment to farm and mutated into the creature now known as Goatman. Whatever the case may be, the legend of the Goatman continues to enthrall the people of Maryland whose claim it still roams the wilderness to this day, frightening local teenagers who park their cars too close to its hunting grounds. So that's it. <laughs> So, some of them did give me the creeps. It did scare me more than the Canadian urban legends, obviously. Um, like, I looked back before because I was scared because I said the sentence or whatever, like, Lady White or something. And, yeah, that creeped me out a bit. <laughs> because I do live kind of near a lake, even though it's not the lake. Um, but still. So that's it for this video. If you liked it, leave a comment down below uh, what country I should do next. And also give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. So I will see you in the, a near future video. I should be posting at least once a week. I'll try to post once a week. And if everything goes good, I could go up to two to three times a week. And um, yeah, so again, comment down below what country urban legends I should do next, or if it, it can be like Walt Disney urban legends, it can be uh, ocean urban legends, <laughs> or whatever. There's urban legends for everything. So, or I could do conspiracy theories. Cons Cons conspiracy. Yes, there you go. So I'll see you guys in the next video. I love you all so much and stay lovely and handsome. See ya.